Well, hey there, everyone. Sharon Thomas here with Established Footsteps to Ministry. And we're just uh, coming to the close of week number two in our October Meditate study where we're focused on some of the I am statements of Jesus. You know, people have all kinds of theories about who Jesus is. But if we'll just look in his word, we'll meditate on what he says, he'll let us know who he is. And he's doing that for us this month. Probably the statements that we're looking at are maybe not new to us, but at the same time, maybe we haven't meditated on them before. And so my prayer is that the Lord is just helping us to get to know himself better and better as we are giving ourselves to the movements of this meditation on these amazing statements that Jesus makes. And this week, you know, we have been looking at the statement where Jesus says in John chapter 8, verse 12, I am the light of the world. I am the light of the world. So I want to spend a little bit of time with you today uh, talking about that. We want to move through these passages in multiple ways, and one of those is listening. So just sharing some thoughts with you as I do each and every week in our Meditate study. And you know, a lot of times as I share with you, I kind of wrap everything around a theme. Uh, today, what I really just want to do is to speak into multiple of things from our meditation over this past week. So the first one, I, and there's three things, uh, and there'll be multiple things within the three, okay? But for the first one, it would be this, a connection to what preceded the statement that Jesus made, that he is the light, or when he said, I am the light of the world. And the reason I wanna do that is because in verse 12, it begins this way, again, therefore, I think that John is making careful uh, dedication to connecting things together in the gospel. And so he's saying, okay, again, I wanna point you back to what just happened, and now you'll understand what I'm getting ready to tell you. And it's so important that we read scripture with that connectivity, that we don't just pull things out in and of themselves. But there was something really important that had just taken place. And in your movement sheet, I encouraged you to go back and read that during the ponder time. And you saw that it was that account of uh, the this adulterous woman that the Pharisees had brought in before Jesus very early in the morning and you know, basically thrown her down at his feet. And they were using her as a pawn to, to trap Jesus, to trick Jesus, and it all backfired on them because he just shone out this amazing light and, and just you know exposed and healed and revealed and, and brought forth truth and all kinds of things. And, and I'm sure that you saw a lot as you were actually looking at that. But I wanna mention several things from that account that connect to what Jesus says when he says, I am the light of the world. First of all, I don't know if you caught this or not, but it says in verse two of chapter eight in John, and early in the morning, he came again into the temple. You know, sometimes it's that early morning hour when we wake up and the sun's supposed to be shining, but it is a really dark day. Like before we even get out of bed and you know, the, the darkness is clouding around. Now the sun can be shining on the outside, but inwardly we are just in a dark place. And those are the days that we need the new mercies of God. We need the sunrise from on high, Jesus himself. That's one of his names in scripture. Uh, and, and he's the sunrise from on high and we need him to shine into the darkness. You know, here came these men these Pharisees thinking they were going to expose Jesus. And they brought this woman and threw her darkness down in front of them. And Jesus takes care of this situation in a completely different way. For this woman, this was probably one of the darkest days, if not the darkest morning she had ever had. And yet the sunrise from on high was getting ready to shine his mercies all over her. And for these men, they were probably thinking, oh, we've got him now. And yet Jesus' light pierces 
right into their sin and exposes them. And we'll talk about that a little bit more. But another thing that I wanted to note from this account was really two things, that he wrote truth and then he spoke truth. And that really just kind of caught my eye as I was meditating, that first he wrote it and then he spoke it. And then he wrote again and then he spoke it. And you know, that's exactly what he's done for us. He wrote the truth and then by the Holy Spirit, he speaks it into our lives. He illumines this word of God that we're meditating upon in our lives. And so one of the ways that he is the light of the world to us is through his word, through what he says. That's the way, one of the ways that he shines the brightest. And so we've got to be in his word. And I just always want to take every opportunity to affirm that in you as you are meditating and giving your time and your affection, and your energy to being in the word of God. That is so important because Jesus has written this word for us. The Bible is very clear that man did not write the pages of scripture, but the Holy Spirit moved men's hands, hands along and they were writing God's word. So he wrote this word. And now he illumines it for us as we give ourselves to it and give the Holy Spirit that, that space and that ear to lean in and talk to us. So I thought that was really, really important for us to note. As well, I wanted to note these two things about this connection to what preceded our actual verses. First of all, he saw into the darkness of their hearts and his light uh, it exposed them and it pierced through them. Now, we don't know exactly what he wrote here, and there are a lot of different theories about that. I think the one that I like the, boat, the, the most is that Jesus um, would have written down the names of their mistresses. See, it's, it's common understanding among many who study the scripture um, in deep ways that many of the Pharisees, um, you know, they, they did not have pure lives sexually, that they had mistresses, you know, they were quick to point the finger of adultery and yet it was going on in their own lives. And we see that very thing today. Uh, sadly enough, we do. We've all could bring up probably several people that we've known who, you know, were trying to lead the way for God and then in their own lives, the very things they were accusing others of and, and calling down, you know, um, condemnation on them for, they were doing in the darkness. And, and we know maybe not every one of these Pharisees was doing that. We don't know for sure if any of them were, but it was a, a commonly, a common thing that happened among them. And so here they are bringing this woman with this accusation and ready to stone her and Jesus' light just pierces right through the darkness. And, and like I said, the, the explanation that I, I tend to lean into the most is that he, one by one, wrote down the names of their mistresses and just exposed their hearts, exposed their evil deeds. He didn't have to say much. Now, we don't know if that's true or not. We don't know exactly what he wrote, but whatever he wrote caused these men to be quiet. These men who were so boisterous and who, who were quick to accuse and quick to speak their opinion, they didn't really say anything. The Bible tells us that one by one, they began to go out, beginning with the older ones. And I think Jesus went, just went down the line of authority and he just wrote it out. He exposed them in some way and they left one by one, not as a mob, not as a group, but individually exposed, the light of Christ exposed their darkness. And then secondly, he saw into the darkness of this woman's heart. There were things going on that were dark that shouldn't have been happening in her life, but his light healed her. His light healed her. What did he say to her? He said, neither do I condemn you. Go your way. And from now on, sin no more. He gave her the opportunity to walk in his light. Now, we don't know if she did or if she didn't, but he gave her the opportunity for that, which brings me to the second thing that I really want to talk to you about. And that would be the things that light does along with the word follow. Along with the word follow. See, let's look at the word follow first. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. 
Jesus is not going to force any of us to walk in his light, to follow him. What does it mean to follow him? I did a little digging into the original language of the word follow, and it actually means to join someone as an attendant, but it also means to side with his party. So if you're following someone, you're joining someone as their attendant to serve them, to come alongside them, but you're also siding with their side, you know, get, getting with their party, <laughs> the party of truth, the party of light and life is it would be with Jesus. And so Jesus gave her, and he actually gave each of these Pharisees the opportunity to follow. And that's why I believe he followed up with this, this statement. Following this event, that early morning event, he's in the temple and he looks at them and he says, I'm the light of the world. Do you see what I just exposed? Do you see how I just healed and gave the opportunity for healing here in this situation? I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in the darkness, but shall have the light of life. And you know, we as believers, we say of Jesus a lot because we know the statement that he made. We say Jesus is the light of the world. And a lot of times we sing that or we write that, we say that. You know, we post it on our social media and it's great, but sometimes I think we say it with such broad, sweeping uh, generalization that we don't really stop and think about how is he the light of the world and when is he the light of the world and why and what does that even look like? Is it just this kind of spiritual, you know, mystical thing that Jesus is the light of the world, he lights up my darkness, or do we get really... Uh, articulate about that. Can we get really articulate about that? So one of the things I encouraged you to do this week in your movement sheet was to consider what does light do? Just in of its, you know, physical qualities, what does light do? And literally you could probably list, you know, 30, 40 things that that light does. I actually have made a list like that before and I tried to find it this week and I just couldn't. But you know, just even sitting down and doing that, I mean, I was able to come up with a, with a list of many, many things that light does. And as we are doing that, then we begin to get, and we meditate on that, then we begin to see, oh, that's how Jesus does that in my life. That's how Jesus does that in my life. Oh, light does this? Well, that's how Jesus does that in my life too. And I hope you took the time to get that you know, specific about it because it helps you to just embrace him all the more, to know him and to be thankful for him as the light of the world. For instance, I mean, just a very obvious thing is light shines. So light shines into our darkness. And that, that can be a, a really positive thing in our lives where it, it just brings the light of life to us. It brings, it brings joy, it brings celebration. You know, we, we love the light. You know, we love to be in the sunshine, right? I mean, light just has a quality about it when it's shining that, that's joyous but also light exposes. When it shines, it exposes. When you turn on a light in a dark room, I mean, things that are not supposed to be there scatter, right? And so that's why a lot of times people don't love the light. They love the darkness more than the light when you're talking about the character, the virtue of a person's life. And so that can go both ways. It can bring about that sense of joy and Jesus absolutely does as we know him, but he also pierces through our darkness. When there's unforgiveness in our hearts, when that, when that light shines on that and reveals it for how ugly it is in the light of the, the truth that we've been forgiven, right? When the light shines on our self-pity and it shows us how much we do have to be thankful for. I mean, there is a correcting and a piercing of that shining as well. So many things to consider as we're in relationship with Jesus and thinking about what light does. Another thing is that light removes fear. You know, when a, when a child is scared at night, you turn on the light, right? When, when we are afraid in our hearts, the light of Christ can bring about truth, can shine that truth into our hearts and dismiss the fear, expel the fear when we see things for what they really are. So many people in these last 18 months have dealt with so much fear because our world has seemed in chaos and not just seemed, but it is in chaos. And yet when Jesus turns on the light in our lives and he reminds us that he upholds all things by the word of his power, 
that he is the light of the world, that he is still on the throne, that he has a plan from beginning to end and he will never be thwarted. I mean, those kind of truths, they're like turning on the light in the midst of our fear. You know, light also warms. Last night, it's getting a little chillier here um, where I live and, um, you know, as fall is coming and or is here, I guess, you know, and my husband and I sat out. We have a, a gas fire pit out on our porch, back porch, and we sat out there and we were reading together and kind of snuggling together and just sitting by the fire because the fire warms. Well, you know what? Christ warms, right? Sometimes we can have such a cold heart and Christ's heart for us, the way he shines into us can literally warm our hearts, can bring about that sense of warmth and and, and, and love in our lives. The light leads. I mean, how many times have you walked with a flashlight to light your way so you can see what's in front of you? When we walk with Jesus, when we follow him, when we side with him, right? When we, we determine we wanna do things your way, well, we've got that leading of the Holy Spirit through Christ in our lives. And you know, so many different things that light does. And as we apply those to who Jesus is, I mean, Jesus created light. He said, let there be light. So he obviously understands light. So when he says he's the light of the world, all the things that are true of light are true of him. And we can then begin to articulate and see and be thankful for how good it is to have Jesus, to follow him as the light of life, as the light of the world. So those two things first, you know, that connection to what preceded and lots of thoughts about that. And then, you know, the things that light does in connection with the idea of following as we follow him and we experience that light, what does that look like in our lives? Those are the first two. And now the third one is this, the response of the Pharisees. See, when I gave you the scripture, I was tempted to just stick with verses 12, uh, to, to verse 12. But I knew the Lord really wanted us to continue on through 18 because there is something there that I think we need to see as we meditate upon Jesus being the light of the world and the light of our world. See, the Pharisees looked right back at Jesus and they said these words in verse 13. You're bearing witness of yourself. And then they said this. I think these are some very sad words. Your witness is not true. Your witness is not true. Can you imagine standing in front of Jesus and saying, your witness isn't true. What you're saying about yourself, that's a lie. It's not true. I, I can't imagine doing that. And yet at the same time, the light of Jesus, as I meditated upon this, pierced through my own heart and said, but you have done that at times. When I tell you that I'm the light of your world, sometimes you look back at me and say, that's not true. Yeah, but what about this or that? So we may not say those exact words, your witness is not true, but the attitude of our heart, the posture of our heart, our, our questions that come back like, yeah, but what about this? You know, or just that place where we've just gotten into a realm of darkness in one area and we've convinced ourselves that that's just the way it's gonna be for the rest of our lives, that nothing can fix it. I mean, we're basically looking at Jesus when he says the statement, I am the light of the world, and we're saying, yeah, but not on, not on this part. Your witness is not true. You know, that can kind of expose our hearts a little bit, um, maybe a lot actually. And if it does, let's just humble ourselves to that and go, Lord, I wanna know you more. I wanna know you more. I wanna believe, help my unbelief that you truly are the light of the world. See, it would have been totally different if these Pharisees had said, you know what, can you teach me more about that? what I just saw you do because you know there were some others there that were watching they weren't the accusing ones there were lots of people there that morning in the temple and and what if they had said what I just saw you do I don't understand how you did that and I've got a lot of questions but will you teach me totally different response I think than your witness is not true it's a humbled response I see things about you that have caught my eye and I wanna know you more. I wanna know who you are. Well, you know, Jesus tells us who he is and this week he has told us, I am the light of the world. And I wanna finish with just going back to that word uh, follow. You know, I mentioned to you that in the original language, one of the things it means 
is to side with his party, okay? I know there have been times when I, I'm, I'm a beach girl, love it, love fall, but kind of morning, my beach time is, is, is fading. But when I'm at the beach, and if I've stayed all day, you know, there comes a time as the sun is going back behind that you gotta turn your chair. You gotta turn away to be in the light. And I just wanna encourage you, do whatever you can to turn your chair, to turn your life, to be in his party, to side with his party, to get in that side where you are following Jesus hard and fast. You're leaning into him, even the places where you don't even fully understand him that you lean in and you say, teach me more about that. And I believe he will. All over scripture, he says, I am. And then he gives us truth so that we can know who he is. We're looking at those scriptures this month and we still have several or a couple more to go, I should say, a couple more to go. And so I, I pray that uh, you're getting to know Jesus better. You're drawing closer to him as you're meditating in these ways and that's just going to continue. Reach out if you have questions, uh, comments, things you wanna share. We always love hearing from you. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll be in touch again soon. See you.